and as you could see that there are two bodies that is the body 2 and that is body 1 two bodies are there which are in contact at a point C uh, uh, the body 1 is in contact uh, with body 2 at point C and body 2 is in contact with uh, body 1 at point D now uh, now you see that uh, the law of gearing states that uh, basically it is the condition by which the gear could move with a constant angular velocity without sliding or penetrating uh, along the normal so this is the condition the condition is called as the law of gearing now in the law of gearing if you want to elaborate how the, how the law of gearing works now let us see if w1 if w1 be the angular velocity if this w1 if the w1 be the angular velocity of the body one uh, uh, which is moves in the clockwise direction and w2 the instantaneous angular velocity of gear 2 and here the w2 which is the instantaneous angular velocity of gear 2 and vc is the linear velocity vc is the linear velocity of c so i have marked that the body one as a black color and the body two as a blue color so the linear velocity of this now we see we know that the a and c is the contact point so the linear velocity is represented at vc you could see this this line this perpendicular line always of a link represents the linear velocity if you uh, if you if you recall the subject of a link if supper if a link is there if a link is rotating you know if a link is rotating like this if a link if a link is rotating like this uh, so it moves with an angular velocity omega we know the linear velocity always acts over here which is equals to v is equals to omega into r r is the radial distance r is the radial distance we know this so from this our study we know that the linear velocity of uh, this uh, of this body uh, that is AC is VC and the linear velocity of uh, the body 2 is uh, BD is along VD so the linear velocity of AC is along perpendicular to AC and it is VC and it is VC and the linear velocity of body BD is uh, is VD uh, is V suffix D so now we could see that uh, uh, from here we could see that VC is equals to omega 1 into AC perpendicular to AC which I have explained before and VD is equals to omega 2 into BD perpendicular to BD which I have also explained now to think that uh, now to analyze that that the component now we should analyze the component of uh, uh, VC and D uh, along NN so uh, here NN is what NN is the normal he, NN is the normal which is passing through the point of contact of the two bodies 1 and 2 so NN is the normal which is passing through the con point of contact uh, point of contact between these two bodies now we could see that the component of uh, component of vc along nn so if you see the component of vc along nn the component of vc along nn should be vc cos alpha vc and if this is the angle alpha so this should be vc cos alpha and the component of vd and the component of vd this component and the component of vd along the normal i mean the component of vd along the normal is vd cos beta is vd cos beta so now the now we we know that uh, that the uh, now what we'll do we will drop a perpendicular from a to the common normal uh, nn uh, from a the, to the perpendicular to nn uh, uh, at this point e so ae is a common normal a a e is a normal uh, a is perpendicular to the common normal fe and again we also draw, draw a perpendicular from b uh, to the common normal at point f so what we'll see that that the angle cae angle what angle cae will invariably will be alpha and angle uh, and and angle dbf and angle dbf will be an angle sorry dbf will invariably beta this angle angle dbf will invariably beta because this is beta and angle uh, uh, c a angle angle c a e will be alpha because this angle is alpha this angle is alpha so now from this 
now uh, we know that uh, if the motion of if the uh, if uh, if the if uh, if the gears move in a constant angular velocity there should not be any displacement per uh, along the direction of the normal if along the direction of normal any movement takes place so along the direction of normal means this direction if this direction if along this direction if the gear this tries to move like this or if the gear this one tries to move like this so what will happen that penetration of the gear will take place so the relative motion of these two gear uh, of these two velocities uh, the relative motion of these two velocities in along the direction of the normal have to be zero so that penetration of the gear of uh, on one gear to the other will not take place so air uh, on and can will not take place for that reason we call we take that the resultant velocity that is vc cos alpha and minus vd cos beta this this one vc cos alpha minus vd cos beta so this one is equals to zero now we know that vc cos alpha have to be zero for uh, so that it should not penetrate now again we know that vc means omega 1 into ac so we write that omega 1 into ac cos alpha minus omega 2 into bd cos beta is equal to zero and from here we know that from the triangle uh, we uh, we could say that uh, cos alpha means what cos alpha means what cos alpha basically means uh, ae by uh, cos alpha basically means ae by ac cos alpha basically means ae uh, this distance based by hypotenuse ac cos alpha means ae by ac so instead uh, in, uh, in place of cos alpha we write uh, omega 1 ac ae by uh, ac and omega 2 bd uh, into cos beta in place of cos beta what we write in place of cos beta we could write that uh, that uh, uh, bf that is bf that is this length base base by the uh, by the angle opposite to the perpendicular uh, so uh, we should write bf by bd bf by bd so we could write that uh, omega 2 is equals to bd into bf by bd is equal to 0 now what happens this ac and bd will cancels each other so ultimately the equation will become double uh, omega 1 ae minus omega 2 into bf is equal to 0 now if you write this if you change the form we get omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to bf by ae and bp by ap now where this now where this term come bp by ap uh, now if we take the if we take the triangle if we take the triangle a if you take the triangle AEP, this one, this triangle, this triangle, if you take the triangle AEP and the triangle BPF, BPF, uh, and if we, and we could say that these triangles are similar. From the similarity, uh, we could easily say that, from the similarity, we could easily say that BP uh, by AP, that is uh, BP by AP means what? Uh, BP, this is uh, BP. Uh, uh, for the from the similarity of the triangle, uh, I have told you uh, BP by AP because the triangles I have told you uh, the, the similar triangles are A uh, BFP this triangle and APE. From the similarity, we could say that uh, BP by AP must uh, must be equals to FP. That is uh, F, uh, FP. That is FP by EP. FP by EP. F, uh, that is FP by EP. So this is a similar triangle. So BP by AP. So this one. Uh, BP by AP must be equal to FP by AP. Uh, uh, must be equal to uh, FP by EP. And uh, once again, I'm telling BP by AP can, must be equal to FP by EP. So and we have shown that uh, omega 1 by uh, omega 2 is equals to BF by AE omega that is B that this BF by AE these are equal uh, these are so from this similarity triangle between the uh, triangles uh, BFP and AEP we could write this we could write this whole formulations now we could see that over here the line joining the centers the line joining the center that is ab is divided by a common normal in the inverse ratio of the angular velocity so the line joining ab the line joining ab is divided by a 
common normal. So the line joining AB is divided by a common normal in the inverse ratio of the angular velocity. This is the first observation. We could say that the line joining the common, uh, the line joining A and B, the centers of the two uh, bodies is divided by the common normal. This is the common normal in the inverse ratio of the angular velocity because we could write that, uh, we could say that uh, w in the inverse ratio that is of the, the W1 minus W2 uh, is equals to fp by ep so if we could write that w1 by it is w1 by the minus by w2 is equals to fp by ep so if you write this is the inverse ratio uh, so w1 and w2 is uh, in fp and ep so that is fp fp and ep that is the line uh, joining uh, the that is the line joining the norm the, the, the line uh, joining the normal is divided by the central line in the inverse ratio of the two gears so from here we could say that w1 by ep is equals to w2 into fp so this is an important observation we could say that that ab is divided ab is divided by a common normal in the inverse ratio of the angular velocity now p now p is a p is a point of contact of the p circle now this p p is a point of contact now this p P is the uh, B is the point of contact of the P circle. Now over here you could see uh, P is a point. This is the point P. Now what is point P? P is also known as the point of contact of the pitch circle of the two pitch circle which divides the line of contact in the inverse ratio of the angular velocity. Now this is the one. Uh, this is the first criteria of the law of gearing. That is the line joining the uh, the centers of the two gear should be divided by the uh, normal in the inverse ratio of the angular velocity. So this is up to what I have. So if you like my uh, way of teaching. So you, please put a thumb mark to it and keep subscribed to my channel for more uh, videos like this related to mechanical engineering. Uh, thank you. Have a nice day.